Yes, let's go. Ready. Okay. Any questions? Let's go. Let's go. Let's do it. Go ahead, Neil. Uh, Danny, RJ talked a lot about uh, guys not uh, finishing through contacts, kind of expecting a foul last game. That was part of the problem, finishing. Any renewed focus on that in practice lately? Has that, that kind of been the case a little bit lately? Well, you know, it, it, it's hard to simulate um, in the stretch of games that we now find ourselves in from kind of not playing very frequently to a bunch of games on top of each other, um, you know, and, and, you know, down to nine guys for practice just haven't been able to – uh, to go five on five with some of the injury stuff going on here. So, uh, yeah, I mean, if we don't, you know, I think we're, we're one of, uh, you know, we're by far the worst team in the conference at, at, at twos uh, in particular, you know, like good twos, quality twos. Um, if, if we can't, you know, the, the amount of layups that we miss um, and free throws, obviously critical free throws has to change. If we want to be able to uh, win, with this group because our margin for error uh, with this particular uh, team right now is, 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 is very thin. Roger. Dan, what, what, is, what kind of consistency do you need right now out of uh, RJ? What are the things you need from him every game at this point for, so that you have somebody that you can rally behind all the time? Yeah, I mean, I, I think a lot of it's intangibles, uh, you know, just like, you know, intangibles. And, and he's got to be relentless uh, as a player. You know, he's got to take a, um, like a, like he was really, really, like his matchup with Zigarowski, I think we would have taken that. Um, but there were some plays that, like, he, he didn't finish for a full 40 minutes, like, um, you know, we, we cut the lead to two pretty late in that game. Zigorowski misses a three in the left corner. You know, RJ doesn't block him out. He gets his own rebound. He scores in the paint to put him up four. Um, we can't afford, like, RJ. We, we can't afford RJ um, to make that mistake. Like, he's got to be so dialed in that not only does he not make that mistake, but his personality, his leadership, the way he's just driving the team, possession in and possession out, um, you know, it's got to be at a higher level. Like the leadership thing on him uh, is what it's about. Obviously, he's got to do a, like a, a better job with finishing twos right now um, and making free throws at the end of games. But like it's just leadership and intangibles, I think. Gavin? Dan, you've talked before about the importance of your seniors playing well to be successful. How do you think Josh and Tyler and Isaiah have played and what do you need for them? Yeah, I mean, we, we need more out of Isaiah. Um, and we need all, more out of all three. I mean, jo um, you know, J Josh, uh, you know, Josh is at a, at, at a point where, you know, he's, he's a senior. I'm sure disappointment has, 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 has set in, um, you know, that, a, you know, that a freshman has, has taken uh, the starting spot, but, uh, you know, he's got to, he's got to, if he wants to make, you know, he's got to make something of his career and of his year, uh, you know, and, and, and help this team. He's, uh, you know, he hasn't given us much. Um, you know, Tyler, you know, he, he's got to get better at moving without the ball. He's got to, he's got to use screens better. Uh, and he's got to defend better because I think his, you know, his, his poor defensive play has affected his, his confidence at the offensive end. And, uh, and I, Isaiah's got to be better. I mean, we need, with the people that we have out, we're, we need all conference level play from Isaiah or else we're going to have a very hard time winning. Uh, we need double figure points and we need close to double figure rebounds. And we need a, a monster defensively. And uh, he's been okay. He hasn't, but he hasn't been what we need him to be with what we're dealing with, uh, with, the, with the injuries. Sean? Hey, Coach. Uh, thanks for taking the time. Just real quick on, on Adama. I know that uh, you're real high on him, and you talk about his warrior type, you know, in practice and just work ethic and so forth. Can you lend a perspective on uh, is he right where you want him to be uh, right now, knowing that you're going to have to rely on him a little bit more? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, his development, just for what we're building here. Obviously, um, you know, th this year it's critically important. You know, for this team, the way we're constituted to have any chance of winning, we're going to need him to play really, really well um, because there's, you know, we're 
trying to find an identity of where we could go with the ball to get points. Um, but yeah, I mean, his, his development into a championship level player at his position um, is critical to what we're building here. And we would have seen this earlier if COVID didn't, uh, you know, destroy his summer and preseason. Same thing with Andre. Danny Barletta. Yeah, Dan, um, the, the last time out against Butler, that was the first game without James. Uh, what have you learned about the identity of this team without James uh, since then? Yeah, I, think it, it's, I think it's had a little bit of, of a psychological effect on the teams, just from a confidence standpoint. Um, but like I said to these guys today, you know, the, the best stretch of winning, the end of last year, in, in the AAC was definitely, you know, a great way to end the season. But um, this is a much, much different level of competition for us. And, and the best stretch that we've had in, in years here of winning three straight on away from Connecticut was, uh, was Marquette and, uh, and Butler and, uh, uh, and DePaul on the road. That's been our best stretch. And he didn't play. Or, you know, he played some against Marquette and didn't play well. Uh, book night so you know we've got to find a way to rally around that um, obviously when you lose one of the best players in the country and you're in year three of, of rebuilding a program and you've now gone up <laughs> you've gone up in level significantly of conference this is not an easy situation but we did win three in a row basically without him Wayne Dan, just give you your thoughts about that first Butler game and what the keys were to your victory. I think one of the keys was we, we were coming uh, in on a high um, and we've kind of flipped spots with them. You know, they've come in off of two in a row, uh, you know, with the, with the good win against the great win against Creighton um, and then the win at DePaul where they played lights out. And then we, we're coming into it having lost two in a row. So. You know, it's kind of the, the, the flip of the script with the first game when we were riding high and they were struggling coming in. But, um, you know, for me, it's, it's obviously it's about Thompson and Enzi. Um, and then obviously, uh, you know, Bolden as a tremendous shooter. And, you know, we've got to be better defensively in the game. We've got to get back to that identity. Um, you know, we've had two lackluster uh, defensive efforts uh, the last two games and we're we have very little chance of winning in this league uh if we don't defend charlotte hey dan i just wanted to to follow up with andre kind of because he's been so delayed with the injury and then the COVID stuff what are you kind of expecting from him when he does get back onto the court and on that if you have any updates with him this yeah week? i mean he listen he desperately wants to be on the court you know it's always when you have injured players and you could kind of look at them on the side and you see that that's a guy that's desperate to get in there so um we're gonna throw him in there i mean listen he's a huge part of this plan that we put together you know three of the you know three major parts of it are on the side watching so uh when he gets in there uh you know we're gonna give him the same opportunity to develop uh that we've given adama and invest in him. Bill Paxton. Hey, Dan, is there, um, with Jalen Gaffney, think he tweaked his ankle or something on Saturday, anything with his injury? Or is he good, back to, good, good to go? No, he's good to go, and we need more. And I'll say this, unless you start to see uh, like a, a 22 to a 25 minutes next to his name, we're going to continue to have issues, uh, particularly offensively. Um, we, we need him to be in that 22 to 25 minute range because uh, like he's a guy that on a, on a team that doesn't have a lot of playmakers on offense, you know, he's a guy that has some potential to make plays. And he's fine. Thank you. you got Mike, Crispino. Hey, Dan, do you anticipate the teams will do what Creighton did with Whaley? It looked like they're laying off him, daring him to shoot the three at the arc. And, and to his credit, he's made some. But is that something you you think you're going to see more of? Yeah, I mean um, that's what makes it hard in today's game. Playing two two bigs, um, it, it it makes it challenging, um, you know. And, and he's got to step in and, and shoot it with confidence. 
And then if he's not going to shoot it, he's then got to get into a quick pass, follow ball screen or a dribble handoff because if his guy is sinking in the paint, you know, now if he gets into a screening action quicker or something with a ball screen now, that defender is in the paint now will be late getting to obviously the, the, the handler or the offensive player coming off his screen. So he just can't hold the ball, man. Shoot it or continue to play offense. Uh, but you just can't kind of shot fake air. Gavin. Dan, you talked about your, your kind of your struggles from two point range. Are you happy with the shot selection? Uh, you know, what do you think of that? Yeah. I mean, you go back and, and watch film um, and you look at the analytics, you know, we're, we're, we're uh, I think we're worst in the league in, in, in quality twos or, or, or good twos, uh, we get really good shots. Um, it's painful to watch, uh, you know, the, the day after in games that you lose by, by small margins and you just can't convert around the basket uh, or, or you can't, you know, convert quality looks. Uh, we just have to keep going and, uh, you know, and, and keep getting good shots and, and uh, hopefully we just start, start making them. Um, you have to make them if you want to win. Otherwise, you're just going to continue to lose in an excruciating fashion. Thanks. Eric Tobras. Coach, just talk about the team's body language and how they've been the last couple of days after a couple of tough losses. Do you have to play kind of amateur psychologist to kind of pump them up and get their spirits going? Yeah, I mean, my, you know, you know, I, I, you know, it's funny because you don't ever want, no matter what situation you're in, you don't want the message sent that losing is okay uh, because there's always a path to victory. Sometimes it's incredibly narrow, but you always have a chance to win uh, no matter the situation. So, yeah, I mean, I was probably um, a little bit more positive the day after the Creighton game. And then, you know, today I was a little bit more, you know, demanding of a, of a winning performance because, again, the players we're going to take the court with tomorrow night um, – you know, that, that, that they're a group that helped us win three straight games away from here in the Big East. So uh, I had to remind the group of that, that, uh, you know, that as much as we, we miss, you know, guys that are out with injury, we, this group has won before. So we got to try and do it again. Charlotte? I just wanted to ask about Brendan Adams. I mean, he's been playing upper 20s in minutes, partly because of circumstance, but what you've seen from him the last couple of games. From Brendan? Yeah, from Brendan. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think he, uh, you know, he, he's, he, we need, uh, you know, need Brendan probably to play with a little more offensive confidence here uh, and not um, and just be rock solid defensively and on the backboard. Um, you know, I think that that's, you know, I think we've got to try to get close to double figure points and then just rock solid play on the glass and defensively. So, um, you know, you know he just, he, we kind of got to try to, he's got to deliver that for us. Okay, Dom. Dan, not having the numbers that you, that you normally have, the fresh legs to run in and out, how much is that a factor in your the defense in the second half? You know, that, that oh, you just don't have to, because the way you like to play, you need numbers, right? No, it's had, a, it's had a big effect. And, and it's the effect also is, you know, like guys are making mistakes or getting driven or scored on. And I want to take them out of the game. Um, you know, guys are making defensive mistakes that normally would get them on the bench. And they're being allowed, and they're being allowed to play through it. And, you know, that's where when your depth, depth takes a hit, um, you know, that's where your defensive end of the court is, is going to, you know, take the biggest hit and losing one player or one and a half players in that rotation kills you when you're building things around defense. Okay, Wayne. Dan, you said last week one day that you backed off in the energy scale to hope that the players would pick up on the energy. Have you continued doing that? Have they gotten the message? Have they been better at energy this week? Yeah, they, they've tried. I mean, I'm trying to, you know, pin a lot of that on RJ and Isaiah. Um, you know, two guys with like person, you know, two guys that obviously play a major role and, and can lead by example, as well as have the, the communication skills. Um, 
you know, but overall, um, you know, I've got, um, we, this has got to become more of a, a player led team and than a, than a coach led team, especially when there's no crowd, uh, when there's no crowds, um, and the players are passive and low personality and low energy, it, that, that, that becomes an issue. Gotta have passion. Gotta bring passion to this thing. Especially when, you know, you don't have a crowd to pick you up when you're coming off of two straight losses. You gotta bring your own passion. Okay, I don't see any more questions, guys. Is that it? That's it? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Coach.